Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do this rainbow makeup look. Um, this was inspired by me <laughs> from a couple weeks ago when I did a photo shoot using rainbow makeup. So I thought I would do a little walkthrough of how I do like rainbow gradient stuff. Um, so yeah, this is what we're doing today. I'm trying the whole thing where I film the intro at the end so you can see the end results. But um, yeah, today I'm gonna walk you through how to do rainbow eyes. And if you wanna keep watching, then keep watching and like and subscribe and all that if you haven't yet. And let's get into the video. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, rainbow, rainbow makeup. That's always fun, right? <laughs> Um, I know rainbow looks can be a little bit intimidating. Um, rainbow or multicolored or just colorful makeup in general can be a little bit intimidating, especially if you're not used to doing it, or if you're not used to working with a lot of colors. So I'm gonna show you how I did a really simple rainbow gradient. Um, there's not, this isn't a hard thing to do, I don't think, but um, you know, working with a lot of colors can be a little bit intimidating, like I said, so. I just wanna walk you guys through how I did this rainbow gradient look. And yeah, hopefully you enjoy the video. Okay, so I am going to be working with this palette. This is the NYX Ultimate Brights palette. Um, this is just what I have on hand. Obviously there are a ton of rainbow palettes out there. So if you're following along, use whatever is available to you. This is just what I happen to be using. Um, I'm also gonna dip into another palette for like a highlight inner corner shade, but I'll get there when I get there. Um, now I find that if you're doing a look that has a lot of colors, um, it's usually good to lay out a plan for yourself. Um, I mean, you can just wing it too. Like you don't obviously have to come up with a plan before you start, but if you know you wanna use a lot of colors, it's usually a good idea to kind of think through what you're trying to do before you start putting stuff on your eyes. That way you have, you can, you know to save room for like, if you want to use 10 different colors, you actually have room to put 10 different colors. Um, I also think it's good to have some general guidelines for how you want to lay out your colors. That way they, they make sense. Um, now, obviously you can put whatever colors in whatever places you want. Technically you can blend any color into any other color in theory, <laughs> um, and it will work, but there's some basic like guidelines you can follow to make things make a bit more sense. Um, so in general, what I've done for this look is there's two guidelines I followed for this particular look. One is going from light to dark. So on the inner corner, I start with yellow, which is the lightest color that I have in this rainbow palette. And then on the outer corner, I do a gradient to a dark purple, which is the darkest color I have in this palette. Um, in general, that's how I do my makeup most of the time anyway, no matter what colors I'm using, I'll do lighter colors in the inner part of the eye and then darker colors on the outer part of the eye. The other thing I did for this particular look was I did two different like color stories, I guess. Um, one on the top half of my lid and the other on the bottom half of my lid. And for this, I followed warm versus cool colors. So on the top, I did a gradient of cool colors. And then on the bottom, I did a gradient of warm colors. And you know, like I said before, you can do a gradient from any color to any other color, but following like a color family generally means that they're gonna blend together a bit more seamlessly and they'll have that nice like flow to them. So on the top, I'm gonna go from yellow to green to blue to purple. So those are like my cool colors. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna go from yellow to orange to red to purple. Um, so those are the warmer colors. And obviously you can switch those up if you want, um, but, but that was the uh, method that I used for the look that I did before. And like I said, I'm gonna try to recreate it as closely as possible, but you can do whatever you want, obviously. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and dive in. Um, one thing I would also recommend if you're doing a lot of colors <laughs> is to make sure you have a way to clean your brushes in between your different colors or have multiple brushes available so you don't have to clean your brushes. Um, I don't have an extensive brush collection, so I just like wipe them off in between the colors. So you wanna make sure your colors don't get muddy, so make sure you clean them in between the different colors. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So 
I am going to take my flat brush. This is, is probably gonna be the brush that I'm using for like 80% of this look. It's just this little flat guy. Looks like this. And I am actually gonna start not in the very, very inner corner, but kind of with the first color on my lid, which is gonna be green. I'm gonna take this, there's a bit of dust in this palette, but oh well. I'm gonna take this, oh, this is so awkward. This kind of like lime green color, and eh? that one. I'm gonna start with that one and get that on my brush. And I'm just gonna start packing that in the very like inner corner, but not, not the inner inner corner, you know? <laughs> the inner part of my lid. Now, whenever I'm doing anything on the actual lid, I like to use packing motions. That's why I'm using this flat brush. So I'm basically just packing the color on and keeping it on basically the inner third of my lid area. And it's gonna be a lot of like back and forth um, with this look, so it doesn't have to be perfect yet. Also, I already have eye primer on. I use the Urban Decay one. Everything will be listed down in the description box below if you're wondering what products I'm using. So really simple, you probably can't see that too well. It's kind of a light lime green color. And we do the same thing on the other side. All right, I'm gonna wipe off my brush. Then I'm gonna go into a blue shade. Um, the one that I used before, and the one that I'm going to use is this kind of bright blue color here. And that's going to go on kind of the middle part of my lid. Same technique, I'm just going to dip, dip in to that color using the same brush. I wiped it off a little bit and then pack the color on. And then you want to overlap just a little bit, but we'll go back in and kind of blend them in another step. But I'm just going to go up my entire lid, kind of hitting the socket area. I'm pretty much just laying down the color in, in this step, so don't really worry about trying to blend it quite yet. So just like that. Kind of looks like I have these big <laughs> blue stripes up my eyes. It's kind of what you're going for. Okay, now I'm gonna do a tiny bit of blending kind of in between the green and the blue. So for that, I kind of wipe off my brush a little bit. And then I just kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. I don't really like blend them. I just sort of like tap in between the colors and it kind of like merges them. Does that make sense? I don't know. So I think kind of what I'm doing is I'm using the residue from just what's left on the brush and that kind of brings the two colors together and makes it more of a, of a blend versus just having one color than another color. And what I'll also do is just kind of keep going back and forth between whatever the two colors are that I'm blending. And you know, if you go too far in one direction, you can bring it back, if that makes sense. Um, so I kind of just go back and forth a little bit between the green and the blue in this case until I get a nice blend that I like and the colors, you know, transition nicely. Um, obviously this is subjective. <laughs> so whatever nicely means to you, go for that. Um, I also find that with this palette and just kind of like 
lighter, more pastel type shades in general. Um, a lot of times when you start to blend them, they will get a little bit patchy. Um, I just find that that's true of, of lighter shades in general, or just, you know, it, it kind of speaks to the quality of whatever eyeshadow you're using. Obviously this is a drugstore brand. Um, I love NYX, I'm not saying anything bad about them. Um, but you know, cheaper palettes can tend to be a little bit patchy in places and it depends on what colors you're using, but there will be a decent amount of kind of going back in and um, reapplying these colors to make them a bit more vibrant because there's a lot of blending going on and uh, when you do, they can get a bit patchy. So I'm just kind of going back in with the green and tapping it kind of over the blue and then kind of doing the same thing, but in the other direction with the blue. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to purple, which is the outer corner shade. And I'm basically gonna keep doing the same thing. So I'm just gonna apply this to the outer corner. I'm using the dark purple shade here. That one. And that's just gonna go on the outer third. Sure. I think that's dividing it by three makes sense. I'm just kind of stamping that out here. Again, packing the color, not like wiping it on. And then for this look, I did a very like round eye shape. Um, just to make it a bit more, I don't know, I don't know what I was trying to say, but um, as opposed to something really like feline and like pointy, I did more of a round shape. So I'm taking that purple and kind of emphasizing that, that roundness. I'm going to blend this out a bit too, um, but right now it's going to look very, very round. <laughs> And then again, I'm kind of just like bringing that up. So I'm basically just following my eye socket right now and not really blending into the crease area at all. Um, I'll get there in a second, but I'm just kind of following that round shape. Okay, and then I'm gonna do kind of the same thing and blend in between the blue and the purple going kind of back and forth just the same as I did between the green and the blue. So like I said, I just kind of start with a relatively clean brush and I just sort of tap it in between where those two colors are and like the residue that's left on the brush kind of starts to make that those colors blend together. And then kind of like I did before, I'm gonna go in really lightly with the two colors I use and just kind of go back and forth and kind of reapply where some of that color has picked up a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in to the actual inner corner and actually put in the yellow that I said I was gonna use. So let's go back there. I'm gonna use a slightly different brush for that just because of the place on my eye where I'm working with, um, what do I want to do? So I'm going to use this guy, it's like a pencil brush. And then I'm going to dip into the yellow shade in this palette, which is this one down here. And then put that right in like the inner corner of my eye. Kind of like where I would do an inner corner highlight, I'm also gonna do an inner corner highlight in a bit, um, but I'm starting with this yellow and just kind of popping it right there. 
And then I'm gonna kind of blend it up in the socket area, kind of following the outer, I guess inner it, edge of where the green color is and just kind of bringing this up. And we're gonna start to blend the um, socket crease, whatever. The upper part of your eye, that area, we're gonna start to kind of blend that out and make it look a bit softer. Like that and just kind of bring it up a bit. I don't know how well that's gonna show up on camera, but it's there. Also right now, this look is like very messy. So there's a, there's a bit of fallout from this palette. Um, I don't have any foundation or anything on yet. So um, I'm gonna clean that up in a bit, but I kind of just apply the colors and then clean them up later, if that makes any sense. I don't know if you guys can actually see the yellow that well. I'll probably come through better in the pictures afterwards. So we'll see. But basically there's yellow in the inner corner and I'm basically just bringing it up through the inner socket area to kind of, again, blend the colors out and up. Okay, so now what do I wanna do? I think I want to try to soften the edges a little bit more. So um, I basically just went back in with the pencil, this is not a pencil, the flat brush, and went into all the different colors and kind of like extended the colors up a bit. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Um, so I'm gonna go back in with the green. Again, wipe off your brush because it's probably really dirty. I'm gonna go back in with the green and kind of use the edge of the brush to blend the colors up a bit more. So I'm gonna go kind of in that green section and use like the tip of the brush to kind of bring it up a bit more. And then I'm also gonna take the green and kind of blend it slightly into like the blue zone. The same thing on the other side. Technically you could have done this like when you were here before. There's just a lot of like going back and forth kind of like I mentioned. And then I went like, I got some fallout um, of the green kind of on top of the blue. So now I'm gonna go into the blue and kind of reapply the blue to make sure it has its own, you know, it's not being overtaken too much. So I'm gonna go back into the blue, kind of reapply it on the lid just a little bit. So that green got a little bit away from me. And then kind of the same thing, I'm gonna take it up into this kind of crease area. I'm not going up too far, but then I'm just sort of blending that back and forth up here. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna blend out kind of the outer edge, but I'm gonna do that a slightly different way. I'm actually gonna take a blending brush and I'm gonna go into a slightly lighter purple. So I'm gonna take this one here. I'll try not to like tilt my palette too much because there's a lot of um, kickback. But this one, which is the one next to the dark purple, and I'm gonna take that and kind of blend out that outer purple edge because it's like really harsh right now. So I'm gonna take this brush Kind of a blending, blending one. Dip into a little bit of that. And then I'm gonna take and like kind of fluff 
out the purple. So this is this is more of a pink than a purple, really. Um, but I'm just gonna take that on the outer edge and just kind of fluff it around here. I think this is technically a tiny bit different than the look I did before, but you know, same idea. This eye really doesn't want to blend that well. There's always one eye that like looks a lot better than the other one I find. I'm also kind of bringing this pink shade just kind of up and around and almost meeting it at the top. And it's, it's sort of blending in all the way to the yellow bit. I can never tell if you guys can like, if like my camera is actually picking up what I can see. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in and kind of um, adding that pink color sort of de-emphasize the purple, so I'm going to re-emphasize the purple and make sure that has its own standing, I guess. There's a word that I'm looking for that I can't seem to come up with. <laughs> but I want to make sure each of the colors that I use, um, you can actually see it, you know, they don't get lost um, by being overpowered by any of the other colors that are surrounding them. So, like I said, there's a lot of back and forth, especially when you're blending a lot of colors. Um, that you know you blend them and then they kind of lose intensity so you have to go back re-intensify that's kind of a word i'm looking for so i'm gonna go back into that dark purple and re-intensify the purple area and sort of make sure that that blends into that pink that's on the very outer edge I really hope that I'm making sense today. I feel like I'm not. <laughs> um, but if I'm not making sense, then don't listen to me and just, I don't know, watch what I'm doing, I guess. I don't know. Basically, I'm just taking this flat brush and sort of blending that purple out into the pink color. It's always like these little areas they don't want to blend. Right there is always one. Okay. Um, I'm gonna finesse that kind of outer edge just a tiny bit with my blending brush. Okay, so that's what we got so far. So yeah, lots of colors. Um, doing ingredients is actually fairly simple. There's just a lot of back and forth and a lot of blending to do. Um, what I'm gonna do now is clean up any of the fallout that's on my face and I'm gonna do um, foundation and like brows and stuff like that. Then I'm gonna come back and do the bottom lid. So I will be back in a bit. Uh, so I switched to a new foundation and I don't know if I like this one. It's kind of cakey today. I'm kind of not happy about that, but whatever. Um, so, so we're back. Hi. Um, so I went ahead and did my foundation and then I did my eyebrows. Um, I did my brows just how I normally do them um, for today. Uh, when I did this look, before for the photo shoot that I did the whole rainbow look for. I actually did colored brows. 
um, because I was wearing my bright, shiny rainbow wig. Um, but since I'm not wearing the wig today, I decided just to do normal brows to match my normal hair color. Um, but doing colored brows is actually pretty easy. I basically took the exact same palette that I was using, and I think I used blue and purple, and I just took, um, I was about to say tooked. <laughs> um, I took an angled brush and just filled in my brows using the color. Um, so it's really not that hard if you wanna do colored brows. Um, obviously you can go a lot farther than that and you can like bleach your brows or um, like block them out and color them in if you want. Um, but I found even just with my dark hair color, um, just putting the, the eyeshadow on top of it still seemed to give a decent amount of color payoff. So if you wanna do colored brows, you just use some eyeshadow, it's really not that hard. Um, but yeah, like I said, no wig today. So we went with normal brows. Um, but okay, so now we're gonna go in and do the bottom lash line, lash line, eyelid. Um, same techniques, we're just gonna be working in a much smaller area and we're gonna use some different colors. Um, so for the bottom, like I said before, I'm gonna do more of a warm color gradient. So I'm gonna go from the yellow that's in the inner corner to like an orange to a red and then fade it out into this purpley pink color that's out here. Um, so I'm gonna do the same techniques, just like I said, using some different colors. I'm also gonna use a smaller brush because I'm using, I'm gonna be in a smaller area, so that makes sense. And I'm gonna try to be a bit more like delicate now that I have foundation and stuff on, I wanna to try to control the amount of fallout. So I'm gonna to try to be a bit more careful with my placement. So I'm gonna go in first, I'm gonna use this little brush here. Um, I'm gonna go into this orange color. Actually, actually first I'm gonna start with the yellow. I'm gonna kind of re-intensify the yellow in the inner corner area. So I'm gonna go back into this yellow in the corner with this little brush and start working down on my lower lid. So it's really important if you have eyeshadow that has a lot of fallout to tap it off so then that way it doesn't land on your face. So basically I'm just kind of re-intensifying the inner corner and then bringing it down following like my tear duct area. And basically I'm going about as far, I'm going like right to the actual eyeball part. <laughs> That's like how far I'm going with the yellow. All right. Now I'm gonna jump in with an orange color. So I'm gonna take the color that's right next to this yellow. So it's this orange right here. Then I'm gonna go a little bit farther along my lower lid. And again, even though this is a different style of brush, I'm still using like packing motions versus like swiping. So I'm kind of stamping the color where I want it. And I'm trying to stay pretty like close to the lash line. Like I don't want to bring it down too far. The transitions on the lower lash line, I think are gonna, I keep saying lash line, lower lid are a bit more um, subtle, I think, than the upper lid, just because of the colors I'm choosing to use. But maybe that's why I chose to do the colors on the upper bit, bit that I chose and these colors on the bottom. Maybe. I don't know. I'm also noticing I didn't really clean up down here very well. That's, a, that's gonna happen. I'm not trying to be super perfect. And then kind of like we did before, then you kind of go back and forth in between the orange and the yellow to kind of blend them together. Like I said, these colors are pretty close to each other to start with, so I don't 
really need to blend them that much, but you apply the same technique, you kind of kind of kind of go in between the two colors and just kind of tap in and that kind of blends the colors together. Again, I'm really sorry if I'm not really making sense today. Um, but I hope I hope you're following along. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna go into a red color. Wipe off my brush a little bit. So I'm gonna take this red color up in the corner here, and I'm gonna do kind of the outer third with that. And this will blend the orange into the purple, supposedly, in theory. And then again, I'm gonna go kind of back and forth between the orange and the purple and make sure that, or sorry, the orange and the red and make sure those colors are transitioning how I like them. And then lastly, I want to go back in with the smaller brush I've been using to that dark purple shade, which is on the very outer corner, and make sure that that is blended into the red coming up from the bottom. So I'm going to basically tap this like right in the outer corner of my eye and make sure that the top and the bottom kind of meet together nicely. Okay, and then what I generally like to do um, on my bottom lash line is take a really fluffy brush, preferably a very clean one, and I just kind of like sweep it back and forth to kind of clean up any fallout that's happened on the bottom and just kind of like blend them together a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna take that and just gently kind of sweep underneath. This is one of those things where I don't actually know if it does anything, but I feel like it does. So you don't have to do this. Um, also, this kind of helps shape anything, I think. Um, so try to like take that roundness and like blend it in so there's no harsh, harsh edges. Okay, I think we're pretty much done, at least for the like colorful bit, which is like the whole point of this look. <laughs> do a little bit more of the yellow. So now it's kind of like going back in and um, again, re-intensifying any colors that you think have kind of faded a little bit. So I'm gonna go with the yellow just a little bit more on the inner corner. Okay, so then just to add a tiny, tiny bit more of a pop, I'm gonna add like an inner corner highlight color. So I'm gonna use that same brush that I was using on the lower lash line. Why do I keep saying lash line? Lower lid, um, clean it off really well. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go into this palette here, which is the, what is it? The Masquerade Mini Palette by Juvia's Place. Um, I'm gonna take this, uh, this shade here. Uh, I'll try not to tilt it too much. That, that really bright white one. Yeah, I'm gonna take that just for a tiny bit of a pop on the inner corner and do like a little bit of a brow bone highlight with that as well. And um, the shade is called Giza, Giza, just like a, Kind of like a white creamy shade. 
with a tiny bit of a sparkle to it. And then put that right in the inner corner, right on top of the yellow, again, just to add a tiny bit more brightness. You could probably do this with like a white eyeshadow as well, if you wanted to. Um, but I like this sort of, almost, it's like a light gold, almost. Just feel like that looks nice. And then I'm gonna take that same color and do a little bit of a brow bone highlight as well. So just doing it out here, basically under the arch of my brow. I'm not actually a huge fan of doing brow bone highlight. I never feel like I do it correctly, but I don't know. It kind of completes the look, you know? All right, so I think that's it for the eyeshadow. I'm gonna add a couple finishing touches, put on some lashes, um, probably do a lip, and then I'll come back and we can conclude this video. Okay, so I went ahead and, oh, there's like a hair stuck to my lip. Mm. Eh. Ah, I can feel it. No, okay. All right, so this is the finished look. I went ahead and put on some mascara, some lashes, um, a little bit of blush, and then I added this like fuchsia, colored lip gloss. There's also a hair like stuck in it somewhere that I could feel, but I can't see, so that's kind of annoying. Um, obviously with a really colorful eye look, pairing it with more of a neutral lip is a good option as well, but I went with this like fuchsia color because it was the color that I used in the original look. So, so that's what we got. Um, so yeah, I hope that made sense. I'm sorry I was a bit sporadic today. Um, but yeah, gradients, rainbow, colorful eyeshadow. Um, hopefully, if you wanted to learn how to do that, you learned something, or at least you found this video entertaining in some way. I think if there's any takeaways from this video, I would say that um, if you're trying to do a look that involves a lot of colors, um, have somewhat of a game plan before you go in, um, especially if you're using a lot of colors you want to kind of have a general idea of where you want to place all those colors. You don't have to map it out like exactly, but um, having a general idea before you start means that you have room for all the colors that you want to use. And then um, if you're thinking about how to lay colors next to each other, just think about what colors make sense together. So like what I did today, again, was using cool colors and then warm colors um, and kind of transitioning in between colors that make sense to transition between. Does that, does that make any sense? Like I said earlier, you know, a rainbow look can be pretty much anything you want. You can blend any color into any, any other color, so you can do them in whatever order you want. But I think doing like light to dark and then like, you know, warm, keeping in like the warm color family or the cool color family makes the gradients kind of make a bit more sense. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I think I might do we're gonna see, I might actually do two videos this week. So I think there might be another makeup video coming up soon. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope I made sense <laughs> and I hope to see you guys in another video. Oh, if you're interested in any other products that I use today, everything will be listed down in the description below. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you have not yet. Hit the, notifi no, the, hit the notification bell if you want to so you can see when I upload. And I will see you guys in another one. Have a good one. Bye.